fluid resuscitation. Principle of a fluid resuscitation is that uh, the intravascular volume must be maintained following a burn in order to provide sufficient circulation to perfuse not only the essential visceral organs such as brain, kidney, and gut, but also the peripheral tissues, especially the damaged skin. So it's indicated that for moderate and major severe burns, in children with their burns over 10% TBSA and adults with burns over 15% TBSA, consider the need for intravenous fluid resuscitation. If oral fluids are to be given, then should not be uh, salt-free, which means salt should be added. It is uh, rarely possible to undergo significant diuresis in the first 24 hours in view of stress hormones that are present. It is therefore appropriate to oral rehydrate with a solution such as a diolite. Three types of fluids are normally used. The most common is a Ringer's lactate or Hartman solution. Other fluids like a human albumin solution or fresh frozen plasma and a hypertonic saline may also be used. Fluids needed can be calculated from a standard formula. As we had seen earlier, there are many uh, fluid calculations formula, but I will look at uh, three common used formulas, Parkland's, Evans, and the Brooklyn Army formula. Let's begin with the Parkland's formula. Parkland's formula is a calculation used to calculate the total volume of fluids that the patient is going to need about 24 hours after sustaining a severe burn. As I had said earlier, 10% and above TBSA in children or 15% and above in adults or second degree burns and higher. When you sustain a burn, you're gonna have a, a change in a capillary permeability. It will increase. Instead of fluid staying in the intravascular system, it will move out into the interstitial system, which depletes our intravascular volume. The heart won't have enough fluid to pump, and this could lead to hypovolemic shock. Crystalloids may be used, such as a Ringer's lactate Hartman solution or normal saline. Out of this, a Ringer's lactate is the most used. Ringer's lactate is an isotonic solution that will help expand the intravascular compartment. So there are some things that you should take into consideration. The weight of the patient and the burn percentage. You will use this formula. Volume of fluid to be given. In this case, a Ringer's lactate is equal to 4 millimeters times BSA times a kilogram. That's the weight of the patient. And the volume you get will be given in this manner. For the first 8 hours, the patient will receive half volume since the burn occurred and the rest is to be given in the next uh, 16 hours. Most fluid loss occurs between 8 and 12 hours after the burn, so that's the reason why. Let's now look at an example. Let's say your patient has a BSA of uh, 63% and uh, weighs 70 kilograms. Using the formula, volume of ringers lactate to be given equals to 4 milliliters times uh, 63 times 70, which gives us uh, 17,640. 17, so for the first 8 hours, we'll have to give uh, half of this. So we will divide by 2 or divide by half, which is uh, 17,640 divided by 2, which gives us uh, 8,820. So you'll give uh, 8,820 mm milliliters in uh, 8 hours. Per hour, you'll have to divide this by 8 or divide with 8. So per hour, you'll give uh, 1,103 millimeters per hour. So the remaining uh, 8,820, you will give it... Uh, for the next uh, 16 hours so per hour you'll have to divide uh, 8820 by 16 which give us uh, 551 for the next uh, 16 hours you'll give 551 milliliters per hour give 50 percent more in electrical burns and uh, inhalation injury monitoring fluid therapy adequate resuscitation is measured by urine output in adults uh, 30 to 50 milliliters per hour and in children 0 0.5 to 1 milliliter per kilogram per hour Increase the rate of our infusion if the urine is uh, less than 20 milliliters per hour and decrease the rate of our infusion if the urine output is greater than 60 milliliters per hour because of uh, the risk of a pulmonary edema, especially in uh, inhalation injury. However, in electrical burns, aim for 100 milliliters per hour of our urine to flush the kidney. Alkalization of the urine by adding sodium bicarbonate to the IV fluid increases solubility and clearance rate of uh, myoglobin in the urine. Hemoglobinuria suggests deep burn, hence flush the kidneys with an increased fluid and mannitol. Decrease in blood pressure and urine output suggests need for colloids, but a decrease in urine output but normal blood pressure suggests need for crystalloids. Pulse and blood pressure recording is important. Pulse should be less than 120 beats per minute. The state of the patient should be calm. 
frequent chest auscultation to detect pulmonary edema. Cerebral edema, especially in children, may occur during fluid therapy. If possible, central venous pressure line is best guide for avoiding over-infusion. Evaluate treatment every 3 to 4 hours. Another method is our Evans formula. Quite similar to Parkland's formula, but uh, the calculation formula is different here, which is a volume of fluid to be given is equal to 2 milliliters times a body surface area times a weight of the patient. Also, here we use both crystalloids and colloids in the ratio of a 1 to 1, and it's indicated for total body surface area only up to 50%. Colloids may include blood and uh, blood products, plasma, albuminum, dextrans, hemocyl, and uh, gelofusine. Crystal is a normal saline Hartman solution and a ring as lactate. Add 200 milliliters, that's 2 liters of a 5% dextrose for insensible losses. Half of the fluid is given for the first 8 hours since uh, occurrence of burn and the rest in the next 16 hours. So you may use the example I calculated uh, in Parkland's formula but in this case remember to use Evans formula which is a uh, 2 milliliters. In this case it's a uh, crystalloid to a uh, colloid in ratio 1 to 1 times a BSA times weight of the patient. After 24 hours, give half of the fluids at a 1 milliliter per kilogram per BSA plus the 2 liters of a 5% dextrose. The Brook Army formula, same formula as in Evans formula, but uh, what differs is the ratio of uh, crystalloids and colloids to be used. So the formula goes like this, volume of fluids to be given equals to 2 ml times a BSA times a weight of the patient. So it's indicated for up to a DBSA of a 50%. Total fluid to be given as a mixture of crystalloids and colloids in the ratio 1.5 to 0.5 respectively. Colloids include blood, blood plasma, dextran and albuminum. Crystalloids are saline, Hartmann solution or ringer's lactate. Add 2000 ml, that's the equivalence of 2 liters of 5% dextrose for insensible losses. Half of the fluid is to be given the first 8 hours since occurrence of a burn and the rest in 16 hours. Again, you can use the example I use in Parklands and uh, Evans to calculate, but I uh, use the Brook Army formula, which is uh, 2 ml times uh, BSA times uh, kg, and uh, the crystalloids to uh, colloid ratio is, is uh, 1.5 to 0.5. So after 24 hours, give half of the fluids at uh, 1 ml per kilogram per BSA plus 2 liters of 5% uh, dextrose. Let's a little bit talk about uh, crystalloid, colloid, and uh, hypertonic saline resuscitation. Crystalloid resuscitation. Ringer's lactate is the most commonly used crystalloid. They are cheap and are said to be effective as colloids in maintaining intravascular volume. In children, maintenance fluids must also be given. This is normally dextrose saline given as follows 100 milliliters per kilogram for 24 hours for the first 10 kilograms, 50 milliliters per kilogram for the next 10 kilograms and 20 ml per kilogram for 24 hours for each kilogram over 20 kilogram body weight. Hypertonic saline. It has been effective in treating burns shock for many years. It produces a hypoosmolarity and a hypernatremia which reduces the shift of intracellular water to the extracellular space. Advantages include less tissue edema and resultant decrease in escharotomies and intubations. Colloid resuscitation. Human albumin solution is commonly used Plasma proteins are responsible for the inward oncotic pressure that uh, counteracts the outward capillary hydrostatic pressure. Without proteins, plasma volume will not be maintained as there will be edema. Proteins should be given after the first 12 hours of burn because uh, before this time the massive fluid shifts cause protein to shift out of the cell. The common colloid based formula is the Mui and the Buckley formula. This formula estimates the amount of a fluid that uh, needs to be infused during the first 36 hours after a major burn. It divides up the total time into six periods of a varying duration. Each period requires the same volume of fluid. The volume of each period is calculated from the following formula. Weight in kilograms multiplied by the percentage uh, total body surface area of the burn divided by two. Each infusion volume is given as follows. First 12 hours, three infusions at a four hour intervals. Second 12 hours, two infusions at a six hour interval. That 12 hours, one infusion. So let's look at our causes of our inadequate fluid resuscitation in burn patients. One, inaccurate estimation of our burn size. Undiagnosed inhalation injury. Committant a traumatic injury. Cardiac dysfunction. Refractory shock. Mathematical uh, miscalculation.